Hello guys, I am a dude playing Devil May Cry 4, and today I'm going to be giving you some tips that will hopefully help you to be a bit better at the game and find the game easier overall. Now, these tips are aimed at those who aren't the best players in the world, those who are struggling a bit with the game, the people who don't have as much time to invest, the ones who just aren't quite veteran. Now, a lot of you veteran players will already know a bunch of these tips, but hopefully I maybe even could teach you guys something. So, my very first tip is to turn turbo mode off. Now, if you've turned it on, accidentally or you thought it might be some sort of benefit the only thing it does is improve the game speed by 20 percent or 25 percent i believe it's 20 percent and this can make it tricky so if you're struggling with the speed of the game you can't keep up you're getting hit and you can't dodge things then turning turbo mode off is a great way to start off getting that benefit of being able to just keep up with the game and then when you get better at the non-turbo mode the regular speed you can turn turbo mode on in the same vein as turbo, you should turn off automatic. The thing of automatic is you press one button, you'll get a long combo. This doesn't teach you the game. And also the thing is, it just it locks you into stupid stuff, which means that sometimes you get to get hit. Now, my next tip is to not use items. The thing with using items is you're not really playing Devil May Cry. Now, this isn't to say you shouldn't get the purple and the... I've forgotten the one, the blue orbs. The blue orbs that, um, that increase your health and devil trigger. That's fine, but if you just go through the game doing this, you're not playing Devil May Cry like, wow, I've just destroyed the enemies, I'm so good. You're not actually playing the game, and you can develop a reliance on items. Now, if that's how you really want to play the game, then by all means do it, but you're not actually playing Devil May Cry at that point. So that's the next thing. Don't get used to items, just stop using them, you'll be a better player for it. The final of the generic tips, which are just the tips for the game in general rather than the character-specific ones, is to max out on everything. Get all your proud souls, get all your abilities, because that is what the game is designed around. The reason that you don't get it all at the start is for the newer players to the series so they can gradually get used to all their tools. Because if they just chuck everything at you at once at the beginning, you get a struggle. So just get everything over time, and then once you have everything, the game will be much easier. The next tip is to get max HP and Devil Trigger. Now, the thing is, it helps a lot. There's no shame in it. It's not the same as relying on items because you do actually still play the game. It's just a supplement. It's just a benefit that there's no point in not getting. You can do this with the secret missions or you can get the DLC if you really want to save that time skip. But whichever way you want to do it, it's very useful and it's going to make the game a lot easier. The next tip is to practice your inputs. If you can't input, you can't play Devil May Cry. So for example, if I want to just jump out the way or dodge something, and I choose to press my gun instead because, you know, I don't have the inputs down, then I'm going to get hit. That's all that's going to happen. So make sure you practice your inputs, learn what you can do. Make sure you can execute it consistently, because if you can't execute, you're just you're going to die and you're going to get hit. The next tip is invincibility frames. Now, invincibility frames are, funnily enough, frames where you're invincible. So what they do, well, not, not what they do, but how you get them is simply, I'm just going to clear a few of these guys out because I just want to have less enemies so I can just talk and demonstrate this better. But invincibility frames, basically, you get them through a few ways. The first one is jumping. Jumping does give you invincibility frames. You see his attack coming, I can jump. And you see how my style went up? That's how you know I dodged an attack. The other main one is rolling. So if you roll, you get iframes, you can dodge the attack. This is important, obviously, for not taking damage, but you don't need me to tell you that. Now, there's a few other ways. Uh, for example, Virgil's teleports do actually give him iframes. Um, I'm fairly sure that there's a couple of other ways, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. But learn what gives you iframes and just learn to abuse them. Like, it's quite funny, actually, because even some of like, the strongest attack in the games, you can just... Uh, sorry, bleh. Let's talk, Kyle. Um, the, some of the strongest attacks in the game can simply be dodged by doing this. Like, this is just super broken. You just get iframes up until I believe it's right at the arc. So it stops about there. There's about where your iframes end. So you abuse those. If you see an attack coming, try and, like, time your roll and whatnot. You get quite a lot of lenience. Next on the list is to stay mobile. Keep dodging things. If you're standing still, you're going to get hit. Right, if I just stand still against these enemies, they will hit me. That's quite obvious. So keep on moving, keep on being active, keep on doing things. If I just stand here doing this silly stuff, I'm going to get hit. So, you know, just hit them, move around. Don't stand still and wait to get hit. Be ready to dodge. Keep on moving. If you stand still, there's, there's no reason for it. Like, you are just begging to be hit. So keep on moving. Because if you stand still, you're going to get hit and you're going to look like an idiot. 
it really helps to just keep on the move. Um, there are exceptions. For example, if you're playing Virgil, he's got his concentration mechanic, which kind of requires you to stand still. But that's the kind of exception, not the rule. Now, there are certain times when you want to stand still if you're waiting for an attack or if there's one enemy. But in general, you want to keep on the move, prioritize the target, stick to it, attack. Don't be on the defensive as much as you can, unless, of course, you're styling. But again, these are tips for the players who aren't going to be doing those things as much. The next tip is to study enemy attack patterns. So let's say I suck against these knights, right? I'm always taking far too much damage and I just suck against them. Finish a room and just keep like one of them alive or whatever, and you can just study them and watch what they do. So you can learn to dodge these things. You can see what's coming. And once you get used to it, you'll be able to apply that in real combat. So you can see here, that's your dodge timing. Just practice that against whatever enemy you struggle with, be it Mephisto or the Knights or Assault or Frost or what have you anything that you struggle with just practice it another tip is enemies will not attack you or start to attack you that's really important if they're not on screen so you can see here i've not got them on screen they are not attacking me they're not throwing anything out i can just do this forever now if you if i look at them you'll see they're on screen they'll start to attack me soon there you go, see, look for launch a fireball. You can abuse this. The reason this exists is because I believe in the previous Devil May Cry games, enemies would just attack you regardless. So what you can do is you can keep enemies off screen and effectively change the amount of enemies you're fighting. See, this guy is off screen. He is not fighting me. He effectively doesn't exist to me. Enemies will try and run on the screen. They'll try and get on the screen to attack you. So if you're fighting a fucking huge amount of enemies and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, just changing the camera can actually be a huge boon in fighting them. The next tip is if you have full Devil Trigger and you don't have full HP, just use your Devil Trigger. Devil Trigger will not build beyond the maximum, obviously. So if you don't use it whilst your HP isn't full, you're just wasting it. So you see here, like I'm not gaining anything. I don't gain any benefit at all. Whereas if, I don't know, let's take a bit of damage. Whereas, say I don't build anything, whereas if I actually use it, I'm gaining some health benefit. So it's a good way of just getting some extra health in the battles because if you just like sit there with full devil trigger and you don't use it, you're just wasting it. You're not gaining anything from it. There's a huge variety of things in the game which you need to be really considerate about and some powerful things that you need to keep in mind. But with Nero, there's only one thing really aside from, you know, keeping your XC gauge full and that is charge shot level 3, charge shot level 3, charge shot level 3. It is so fucking godly. It's so good. I mean, you do this, boom. It stuns everything. I think even every boss gets stunned by it. And you just keep using it. Like, there's no reason to not be charging it. If you're not charging charge shot level 3, you're not playing the game right. It's too fucking good. Streak for mobility is a very important tool for Nero, in my opinion. Now, you won't see this in, like, the super high level play. But the thing is, Nero has very limited movement options. He's got run, double jump and walk slowly. So this is why I like to use Streak to close the gap. He's got the other gap to, uh, bleh, gap close tool, which is the pull. I don't know what it's called. It's Grim Grip or something, or maybe that's just the blue or pulls. But the thing is, is that sometimes if you know you're right away across the arena from the enemy, it doesn't reach, you can Streak in, and then you can pull someone in. That's so much quicker than like running half the arena and then pulling someone in. So it's really one of the tools that I use a lot, and it's what I find useful. It's what keeps me able to stick to an enemy and keep on the aggressive. The next trick of Nero is Devil Trigger gives you iframes. It just gives you a chunk of them. I'll just show you, give you a quick demonstration, but it's really simple. You see an attack coming, boom, your Devil Trigger. The only time it doesn't work is if you're already in the middle of a buster animation, in which case you don't get the iframes. But I believe in every other scenario you do, so just boom, iframes. It will deflect those, but you will iframe through pretty much everything. You can also Devil Trigger out of grabs in the game, like um, Blitz and whatnot with that. I believe that that's on every character, but I'm not sure if you can, like, Devil Trigger out of some other stuff with Nero that you can't with the others, but I think you could do it with everything. But yeah, Devil Trigger gives you iframes. Use it if you get caught in a bad spot. The last tip I've got is don't buster into long animations unless you know you're safe doing it. For example, with Assault, if I bust a one, I'm locked in this animation. I can't jump out of it. It takes me ages before I can act. So if I'm against, like, more enemies than just another Assault, I'm going to get hit. So play it safe with your busters, unless, like, if you if you don't know if you can get away with it, you're safer just not doing it. Obviously, against a single enemy, you're probably fine. Well, you're definitely fine. Just keep that in mind. You know, don't lock yourself into stuff you can't get out of. Because when you buster something and you devil trigger, you don't break out. 
You don't get any iframes off that. There's no way to do anything to defend yourself. Character specific tips. This one is Dante. Now, I'm not a godly Dante by any means, but I can give you a few little tips. So, my first one is to not get used to one style, right? Like you see here, I'm just using Trickster. I'm no, I don't have that variety. I don't have what makes Dante Dante. So, you know, mix up your styles, get good. I personally am not that great at Dante, but like get good, learn what's what. Because if you stick to just one style, you're going to end up overwhelmed for no good reason. You're just handicapping yourself, and that's not good. It doesn't provide you any good benefits. So practice, mix your stuff up, learn all your tools. With Dante, when you're in Devil Trigger, you get extra jumps and you get extra trickster dashes. So you can see here, I just get my regular trickster dash and I get one jump. If you Devil Trigger, you can dash infinitely on the floor until your Devil Trigger runs out. You get two extra jumps in the air and you get two extra dashes. It's quite a useful thing to know if you ever get caught in a situation where you've already used all your movement options and there's enemies about to get you. The final thing with Dante that you really want to know is Distorted Real Impact. Now, what is Distorted Real Impact? Well... <clears throat> It's a move with Gilgamesh which is designed to do insane damage, but there's actually a bug with it where on each hit, if you actually mash your Devil Trigger, that's all it takes is just mashing when you do it, you actually do the damage instances twice, and it's a bug they left in from DMC4, the original, this is Special Edition, and I'm not sure why, but it's a really cool way. It lets you completely annihilate bosses, as you're about to see. Boom. And you just gotta mash your Devil Trigger, it just does insane damage. And boom. Okay, I have one hit. This is how you cheese out bosses really quickly. And if you're against a single enemy, it's a really quick way of just dispatching them instantly. We have Virgil. One of Virgil's really important tools is perfect frame judgment cuts. So this is what a judgment cut normally looks like. However, if you release your charge just on the frame it comes out, you get what's called a perfect judgment cut, which is instant and it does far more damage. The more concentration levels you have, if I had stopped sucking, I could actually throw it out. The more concentration levels you have, the more powerful it is. It's a very important move for Virgil. It's very, very powerful. Practice it and get good at it. It makes you a lot better at the game. The last thing I want to discuss with Virgil is teleporting does give you iframes. So the way teleporting works is you use it like you would the, um, the uh, long range buster on Nero to pull them in. You puts a sword in them and then once that sword is in them you can just teleport to them. You don't have to wait for a sword to fly at them like that. So teleporting does give you iframes. It's got infinite range or near it. I think it was only disabled on the savior. But teleporting does give you iframes. Um, I'll try and demonstrate it here. It's not the best enemy to use it on but it should be fine. Okay, well, I got hit because I'm fucking terrible. <laughs> but teleporting does give you iframes. It's most useful when someone's launching a projectile at you. Wow, I am so shit. It's brilliant. But it's useful when someone's launching a projectile at you. Okay, there you go. I got to demonstrate it there. So if you ignore the part where I completely suck ass, that's how you use your teleporting iframes. So what is concentration? Well, concentration is a mechanic specific to Virgil. It's the bar up in the top left hand corner and it's got three levels to it. It's got nothing, level one and level two. I guess you could count nothing as level one, but that's when you don't have any benefits from it. So more concentration you have, the better your moves are. You build concentration by either hitting enemies, killing them, standing still also builds concentration. And also teleporting, I think it's because it counts as standing still, but that does actually build concentration. You can't build concentration when there's no enemies around. And having high levels of concentration gives you access to moves. So normally with like Bale, for example, you can only charge to level 2, and that would be your attack. However, with maxed out concentration, you can go to level 3, which does insane damage. Now, there's a trick you can do with this move in particular. If you Devil Trigger on the same frame, similar to Distorted Real Impact, that would actually do double damage or near double damage because the devil trigger hit is slightly more powerful. It also gives you access to level 3 beast uppercut which is unholy, it's absolutely brutal, that just does insane damage. Which brings me on to the next point, how do you practically apply this? What I'll do is I'll just clear one of these guys out quickly so I don't end up getting interrupted. Okay so how do you practically apply this? Well you have heavy rain swords which is something else I wanted to bring up. So I begin charging, heavy rain swords he gets stunned. Boom. Huge damage. Now, Heavy Rain Sword stuns everything in the game. It's amazing. 
I don't think there's anything it doesn't stun that it can actually reach. The Savior you can actually target with it, but no one cares about that fight because it's shit and boring. So that's how you use your concentration. The way you do your heavy rain swords is you do forward, uh, backwards to forwards plus your swords button. You sh on default, it's going to be on X or square, depending on your platform. Um, I don't know what it is on PC. And to do beast uppercut, you just simply hold backwards plus your melee. So what you want to do is you want to start charging that heavy rain source to stun them. Boom, you'll do a lot of damage. So thank you for watching the video. Keep in mind that these tips are for the players who are beginning at the game or who can't quite get past down to must die difficulty and stuff like that. That was weird. So just keep that in mind. Veteran players, don't get too triggered at the fact that you probably know most of this stuff. And hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, let me know. And uh, in particular, if there's something that you don't get or that, you know, you can't quite wrap your head around, leave it in a comment and I'll try and help you out best I can. And thank you for watching.